All right, my neighbor might as well have a kennel. There's a lot of dogs. So anyway, let's rebuild this thing. Uh, gonna go through some of the stuff we need to do to get it open. Uh, the bug and the bus are very similar. If you have a bug, um, the difference is kind of the two screws here and the thing goes in the side. It does attach just a little bit different, or it actually goes this way. It goes in the side like that. Um, this is the bottom. Um, and I'm going to kind of go through and show you guys how to get this thing apart and get it back together. Um, getting it together can be a little tricky, trying to get the little things to line up. Just take your time. If you're going to do it, you know, do it at your own risk, of course. And, you know, if, if you get, you know, just take your time and work your way through it. That's what was going on. Ah, uh, the horses are driving, going by. That's what the dogs are all excited about. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is gonna take off, I think they call these the veins or something. I know I have the most inappropriate screwdriver. This is a carburetor screwdriver from back in the old days when they used to have a lot of carburetors. I used to have a set of snap-on ones. Okay, snap on. It was back when I was a mechanic in a shop. Haven't done that in a long time. Don't wish to go back there. But it's something that if you know, it's kind of good to know. It's going to be really careful. We'll get this off. This little ground. Bring you guys back in. I'll get that off. I just sort of lifted it up and over that. Anyway, inside here you'll notice there's these little, these ones actually I think are in good shape. I don't know if the speedometer needs to be done, but I figure doing it now would be a lot easier than after it's in. But if you see down in here, um, if you see those red and green things in there, those are what you can use is you go down to like Walmart and you know those see-through and there's a blue one up here for the well where is it on this one let's clean it off and look at it. all right here's the magic this is a Euro Speedo 10 kilometers same again as American ones just to has a different face on it. Let's clean it up. I can't remember where the brights are. Oh, it's in the in the middle. Yeah. In the middle, and then on the bug, the, the turn signal's in the middle, and it's up here for the brights. So, like I said, basically the same. You have to be very patient and just willing to just spend time doing this don't be in a rush I'm like getting these things out I've already lubed them and I'm gonna put this thing to 12 volt for now I don't know if I'm gonna keep it 12 volts but I have a 12 volt engine so I'm gonna change all the bulbs to 12 volt for now and I don't know maybe I'll convert back to 6 volts or I may put a voltage inverter or converter I don't know which one it is to bring it back to 6 volts for the lift when I get it done so let's get these out I'm going to get a screwdriver or a pair of pliers get you guys back a little further so in case I get you out of frame so if you if you don't have a set of these uh, these are Irwin vice grip uh, to mimic the Nipex pliers the Nipex pliers are great they're about 70 bucks so um, these are a great alternative. You get a really good set of pliers for cheap if you're looking. I mean, like twenty dollars for two. I think I think I paid for them. A lot less than the Nipex. So all those things come out. Again, they need to be cleaned. Like there's some dirt and grease on them because we want those to have good contact. And they have six volt bulbs in them. So that one looks pretty burnt out there. I'll save all the bulbs in case they go back to six volt. So we're gonna try this with the pliers. I know that's not the right tool. Give it. Eh. Ah, yeah, it's not too tight. 
usually they aren't. And then on the bus, this thing will spin around. So you gotta rotate it and put it in the right spot. But if you need to replace those little, like if your indicator, I don't know what you call them, the colored shields in there are bad, uh, what you do is you get, they have them at, uh, you know, like Walmart or something, and get some of those uh, notebooks that are have the clear, and just cut out little pieces and glue them in place. That's what I always do. But these ones look really good, so I may not do them. Maybe keep them original. I like I said, I don't even know if this one's bad, but like I said, I don't know. So this part's a little tricky. I don't know with this screwdriver, it may not work very well. I have to get a different one. But what you do is you kind of pry up this edge. If you're lucky, you can kind of slide your screwdriver along. And make sure I'm in frame and just kind of pry up this edge all the way around usually you can do like half of it and then pull one half off and the other side will come off and then getting it back on is a little tricky it just takes you just got like I say you got to take your time to get this part off you take off this little edge all the way around So I'll do that. I'll bring you guys back in so you don't have to watch the whole thing. But just kind of, you know, sometimes you can get your screwdriver in like this. Get a shorter one. I'm going to work with that. All right, Musty One, we're going in. No. <laughs> it's funny when he says that. It's so funny. He has the same screwdriver set. He's the same, same age as me. So we have a lot in common as far as tools and stuff go, background. It's crazy. I just work my way around. Kind of, if you get really good, you can kind of, you kind of just or I have the same as him. I guess he's bigger than me, right? For now, Darren, when they catch your ass, you know that, right? No, I'm just kidding. Totally kidding. I'll never catch Darren. He's doing a great job on YouTube. I don't think I'll ever catch him. I don't think I'll ever pass him. It's all right. I'm just going to do my thing, and he's going to do his. And we're going to have fun doing YouTube. So anyway, you just work your way around. Do a little bit of this side, usually. I don't do the whole thing on both sides. Let's kind of work my way around and pop it loose and then sort of get it started. And like I said, putting it back on can be a little bit tough. Okay, there we go. Careful not to hit the needle. Done that before. They're available. You can buy them on eBay or someplace. Okay, so now you got to put on your gentle hands. Maybe wash them. I don't do any painting or anything in here. Uh, you guys can do that if you want. I just I just try and not touch it because I don't like fingerprints on it. And then, like I said, be really careful with the needle. Try and not break it. And don't lose all your parts. So this is where it can be just a little bit tricky. You take off this part. Some people will actually take and put the numbers all back. I'm going to do that. So on the bug, it's going to be a little tougher to get this, get this, the back piece off. You'll notice there's like a long tube on the top to get to this part. And sometimes this part falls off of the bus and just glue it back on carefully right into place. But this is really the part that you guys are looking for right here. Take this off. I've had trouble getting these back on sometimes. So, you know.
Okay, and there's this is a magnet here, and that's I don't know what that thing's made it up, but that uh, creates a magnetic field and then makes this thing. Uh, and then what there is is a spring on there. Don't disassemble any of that. The spring down inside here, when those go bad, I don't mess with it. I just, you know, that one, I think you need a donor at that point. If the spring is bad. Um, and that, what that'll do is that'll create it to be off if the spring is bad. So, or if you put this part on wrong, which can be done. Okay, then... I take this part off. It's just a little screwdriver. Be very careful. Taking that one off and putting it back on. You see how that can be adjusted? It goes up against this worm gear. Goes up against another gear right there. It needs to be just touching it, that's all. When you put it together. So, to get this part apart right here, okay, if I remember right, this is where it gets a little scary. We gotta push that ball out, okay? And let me see if I remember this correctly. I'm gonna do it and then I'll bring you back in in just a second. So, very carefully, I just tap on the end of this. And then this little ball comes out. It's kind of just what swedged in there. And then you pull out this gear. Just remember which direction it goes. If you remember to see this part right here. Let me get you guys a little closer. If you look right here. That's like that. The gear goes in the bottom. You have to push this out. And there's a little horseshoe clip behind here. So let's push this out. I need a smaller pin to push that out. Okay, here we go, We're going in. All right, so that thing comes out like that. Goes in where the ball sets. It looks like the gears are okay. This is for the uh, odometer anyway. If you know, if you're trying to fix your odometer, you, I don't know if you can buy these or not. Probably not. But then, what happens next is I remember this thing comes out. I usually had somebody else do these for me, so just so you know. Okay, this thing comes out here. Remember. The rounded side goes in. It's easy to get that backwards. And see there's a little horseshoe clip here. And it comes out like that. So this goes in. The washer goes on. This will go in place with this side in. I've done it before with it backwards. And of course it wouldn't go back together. So then... This part comes out like that, and this is the rod you're trying to grease. So this one actually had some grease still on it. It was in pretty good shape, but when that grease gets old, you know, it just starts giving you havoc. And this needs to be clean. This is a magnet, so you need to make sure there's no debris on here. If you get a little bit of debris on here, it'll start to cause problems. You know, it'll get caught. And then this speedometer will just go like crazy. So if you put it together and it does that, you probably got debris on there. So let's clean this up. We'll put some grease on it and stick it back together. See if it works. All right, so I stay in frame. I'm gonna move you guys back a little. So this one's pretty clean. I don't think it needs anything. Uh, the trick is, is to make sure that this washer stays or this uh, horseshoe clip thing stays it's not really a horseshoe clip but it's kind of like one right stays in the right place when you put this in okay and you put it make sure it's all the way in put your gear back in 
let's grease that. A little bit of grease. A lot of you guys can send them out if you want to send them out to a guy. There's a guy that does them, does a great job uh, doing this procedure. Charges the most of them charge at least a hundred bucks. But some of you guys, it's like the shipping cost is so much that now yeah, we got to get this ball back in here. It's going to take a little persuasion. I might just put this in the vise real quick and just give that a little tap. Be very careful not to bend any of this stuff. It's very, very tight tolerance, okay? Very tight tolerance. So you can't bend anything. You gotta be really careful putting that ball back in. I'm gonna go ahead and knock it in real carefully. Kind of set it up on the vise like that. And just kind of gently tap on that and knock that back in place. I'll bring you back in. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. So when I put it in the vise, I didn't clamp it on this portion. Okay. I put it down and I set it on this part right here and on this little ledge right here. So it sat like that. This little thing, this ear, and this little ear. And then just tapped it with... A small screwdriver and a plastic hammer and of course it went right back in place sometimes they're loose and you'll get them coming out and you can just take a little bit of Jane B weld and kiss them with that and fix it that way done that many times you know if it sticks you know if it's stuck in place just put a little tiny bit on there a little bit of silicone something to keep it in place so it won't fall back out sometimes it get loose this one was really tight this one was in great shape so this ring, remember how we took it off? It was this direction, right? If I'm wrong, somebody will correct me. Look at the comments. And then this goes back on here. So very carefully, I take this. Let's see. I need to have it clocked the right direction. Should be like this. Ah. One of the things you need to watch out for is sometimes this little shaft will push out too far and that little horseshoe clip will move over and then it won't turn freely and it won't line up. So if you're having that problem, that's probably what that is. So anyway, I'll put this back in here. It's very got to be very careful oh yeah and there's this little pin right here at the top it has to line up with the center of that as well so it's a little bit of finessing it takes a little bit of time I'm not going to be able to do this part on camera but that little pin has to be centered in the very center of that hole that little tiny hole right in the middle there and let's see let's try to tell a photo yeah if you can see that little tiny hole in there it's got to line up so doing this on camera is really tough, this part, but you got to get it to line up in that thing and don't force it. Just be really careful with it. All right, that did take a little bit of time. It took me about two minutes or three minutes or so. Just feeling around and getting it in the right place. If you get it wrong, you, this thing won't work. So then this lines up with this hole. Again, this part's a little bit just, it's not a big deal. It's just slow. You just take your time. Getting that one to line up there. I got that one in. Get this one in. I know the speed, guys, speedometer guys are going to hate me for making this video, but you know, some of you guys are so far away that, you know, I know some of you guys are. Rural. Okay. Or actually, they're going to love me because some of you guys are going to mess up. I can't figure it out. No, I don't know. So then, not too tight. Just gently tighten it up. Just enough that it won't come out. There's no torque specs for this. 
okay now you can test it I uh, gotta get something a small screwdriver give it a little spin you'll feel it it'll work you'll feel it working right let's do that okay this is how you know when you mess up it won't move so this should just be able to just dangle so I gotta take it back apart again this is always the part of this that is not easy take it back apart and recheck it something is a little bit jammed in there like I said this is the part where it's you guys might give up Give me just a little bit. Yeah, looks like that pin must have come off. Come off somehow. I should have checked it ahead of time too. I'm sure, the needle was moving. Could be frozen in the middle. Yeah, that's what's going on this one the needle itself usually this moves nice and freely this one here is stuck so usually this like I said usually this kind of the spring brings it back down I don't know if the spring is any good or not uh, like I said when the spring's done it looks like I'm gonna try lubing that little guy down in there yeah this one's not moving freely this should just this should just drop down the needle should just come right back down to the stop and it's not. You see how that's working? So this one, the spring might be bad. So, uh, which is ba bad news. You know, that usually means, I mean, there's probably somebody who could fix it. Some of the Speedo guys might be able to do it. But generally, the procedure that I showed you right here of greasing that fixes 99% of speedometers. Let's see if we can lube that. I gotta be really careful. I don't want to get grease on the outside of this. So I've got to get some on there. Let me see if I can do it. All right, so normally you would have to take the needle off and then take these two screws off to get this face plate off. And a lot of times you break the needle. So I didn't want to do that because um, I don't really want to wait for a needle. Um, I did get it to you. It's weird when you hold it in this hold your finger in the center where it's actually centered on this thing Then it will actually go the needle feels free now um, but I just I had to use a little bit of uh, brake clean Of course, that's going to discolor this whole thing. So like I said, that's why I don't normally do that but I had to to be able to do it without otherwise I'd have to take the needle off and take these two screws off and possibly have to buy a needle so to not do that I went ahead and tried it and of course it discolored it right here so that's why I say don't touch that stuff you know if you really most of the time this is not a problem usually this part moves freely but this one here was really stuck so it's freed up now let me see if I can get a Q-tip and I'll just take brake clean. I'll try and clean the whole thing evenly or just do half of it I don't know just so it looks a little better But you know, some guys take it apart and actually tape that whole thing off really carefully and paint the middle section Like I said, I don't want to take the needle off. I'm not gonna so if you want to do that. That's up to you um, but buy a needle just in case ahead of time Because you might not be able to get the needle back on a lot most time you can you can take them off and sometimes when we have one that's miscalibrated, we'll pull the needle off and then move it and put it back on. And just check it with your phone when you drive it. You know, use a, one of those apps that shows the speed, you know, as a speedometer. 
and uh, check it with that and then make sure it's right and what we'll do is we'll pull it off and we'll just move it a little bit put it back on so the needle will be pushed against a little bit tighter or uh, it'll you know start off a little bit different that's how we've done it before um, like I said that is up to you but I'm gonna go ahead and try and clean that up a little bit and I'll bring it back in all right, so I just used a little Q-tip and some of this stuff. You could have probably done, like to do this part, I could have probably taken a Q-tip with a Dixie cup and just tried to clean it like this. Might have been better. So you guys can learn from my mistakes, right? Not a big deal for me, but for some people that would be just, oh my God, this is terrible. So I'm going to do a little bit more with the Q-tip inside here. I mean, it doesn't matter at all. Get this all out of here, then I'm gonna use a little bit of oil. I'm gonna use some Freol, which has oil in it, on another Q-tip, and then put just a little tiny bit of oil on, you know, machine oil on that contact. It's just like a little, little bushing in there. And just to make sure it doesn't bind up when I get it together, We'll put it back together. You guys who have watched my channel, I will not buy that uh, PB Blaster ever again. This stuff's way more expensive, but it works every time. I mean, I, I've had stuff where it was just stuck, and I put this on it. I put people PB Blaster on it. It didn't unstick it. I put that stuff on in five seconds. It's working again. So I'm just going to put a little bit of that, and it has oil in it. It has a little, like a machine oil that stays on stuff pretty long. So it's actually really neat stuff. I mean, it's nothing short of amazing to me. I, I used to use the stuff, uh, old GM uh, or Delco part number X88A, and that stuff was good too. Uh, better than PB Blast. I, I don't know, PB Blast just... After using this stuff, you just you're not gonna go back. <laughs> Thanks, Marcy Junebug. She's the one who told me about it on her YouTube channel. Or her dad. So anyway, stuff works amazing. So I got a little bit of oil on that. It feels very free now where before, and I can feel the spring is there and working. Like I said, when I center it, it follows back to I don't know if you just saw that. When I center it, it falls back down. So the spring is there. It's a very, very light spring. So let me put it back to where it was and we'll check it again. Uh, same way, same second verse, same as the first. Now so that's the way it's supposed to work. You feel how that just drops down on its own? The little spring's doing its job. It's centered. Luckily we had that problem, right? I, that's one I've never seen. So I'm gonna just give these a little snuggy. Just be very careful. Everything's got to be very clean. It's just very intricate parts here. Check it again. So, let's try it with the screwdriver. And just see, it should just jump up when I... Yeah, there we go. There we go. It's working right. How about that? It's not as pretty as it was, but what can I tell you? You know, it's it's gonna work. So that's the best part. It wouldn't have worked before. So, we are moving forward. I'm gonna go ahead and put this together. Um, at this point, again, what you would do is this person, I don't know if this has been in here before because I don't remember these having tape on them. S these have tape it, on them. It looks like somebody taped some new, uh, you know, your, your, I think your oil or your, generator is red these two are green or no the one in the middle is blue because this one here is a the brights on the bus right it is blue in the middle so red on the left side green on the right side if they're missing that's why I'm telling you this um, and then I believe these ones here are green yeah so there we go uh, all we got to do is reassemble 
And again, this sometimes you have to super glue this fella in place. This one here is actually in place on the bus. The bug will have a little tube on the top that you have to line up, which is a little bit different and difficult than the bus. You'll find that out putting it together. Just be very careful. Oh wait, I gotta put this on. Um, kinda got too excited there. Um, I gotta put this on. All this goes is, we'll put it on and I'll show you how it works. All right, so that's how it goes there. Screw washer, make sure it's touching here and on that gear. And this goes in the hole. Then grease that little bit. Just throw a little tiny bit of grease on there. A little bit on there. Clean your hands off again. Put it together with clean hands. Okay, so this one here, all you do is you just set this in like this in place. Put the washer on. Again, I try not to touch anything in the speedometer area because it's hard to clean off. I find my nut. Anybody see it? Oh, there it is. Make sure it's clocked correctly. I believe there's some there's some little this little thing in here to hold it in place. So make sure you get it clocked right. I know somebody's gonna get mad at me for using my pliers on that, but oh well, it's all right. A lot of times I'll just hold the needle, the top of the needle, so I don't touch anything. Tighten this down, bring it back in. Some guys will clean and paint this before they put it on. I don't, because it's behind there, you can't see it at all. I clean the glass, but if you use steel wool, make sure that you get it completely spotlessly clean. Uh, before you put it back on a little piece of steel wool some people will say oh that'll ruin it it doesn't ruin it it just makes it you got to do the whole job again you got to get that little speck out of there so this is the tricky part is getting this back on it's it just takes finesse you get one side started kind of push it on line it up And then just kind of work it around. Sometimes I got to use a little poker or something. Usually I got to use a screwdriver and kind of just pry it open a little bit and push it at the same time. Really hard to do this on camera, but. I'm just trying to show you, there you go, there it goes, that's what I'm looking for right there. Kind of just do that procedure there. Work my way around, it'll stay on too. There it is. That's all back together. So the limit by doing that. Um, you can push this part down if you're really worried about it. Just go around like that. Some guys do this. Like that. Anyway. Then we test it again. It works. How about that? All right, guys, looks like we got a new Speedo for the bucket truck. Continue on with the build. And uh, you guys learned something today. How about that? See, it doesn't look bad with the glass on.
when it's inside the vehicle with the less light it'll look great good enough for me i wasn't looking for perfection i just want it to work I'll talk to you guys in the next video please like share and subscribe see what you have to say again these are the same as the bug pretty much it's just a little bit different the bug does have like the th because it goes to the side sometimes there's a little part you have to j and b weld back together on those but the little ball bearing part i think is very much the same and the rest of it uh it, I, it's been a while since i had one apart so i can't tell you exactly but um it's pretty much the same procedure and you could probably muster your way through it if you just watch this and do it yourself I'll talk to you in the next one. You know, like I said, it's up to you. Uh, whether you want to try it or not, it's okay. Either way. Talk to you in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe.